and welcome to Shitubox Basic. This is a desktop software for preparing CAD data for printing on resin-based systems. Once you've entered the software right off the bat, it's good to double check you've selected the proper machine because it does impact your build volume that we see on screen. So there's a little plus button down here that if you were to click, you could add a new system based on what you're working with. For the rest of this demo, we are going to be slicing for printing on the Creality Halomage Pro, which I've already selected. I'd like to hit open and import the CAD geometry I'd like to prepare for printing. Once I've loaded my STL file, I can come here on the side. There's a few tools that allow me to move, rotate, scale and also mirror my geometry if needed. So I already know that I will not be printing my STL file like this, standing up as it's originally imported. So what I will do is rotate this sphere. So I'm gonna get a top-down view by holding down the right mouse button and dragging to change my view. Then I'll go into rotate and I can actually use these plus and minus 45 buttons to adjust my rotation. Once I've kind of figured out what my orientation will be, I also should go into the move and move my semicircle slightly above the build plate. Now, best practice for printing in resin is to allow some height of the support under your model and not printing directly onto the build plate, especially with this curved geometry. Adding a bit of height of supports will make it easier for them to remove. I can add some height in the Z direction, up by about five millimeters. And I can also hit the centered button to center it on the build plate. Once I've rotated my model to where I'd like it to be, as well as added some height between the build plate and the model, I can go ahead and hit this button right here, which will take me to the support structure settings. As you can see by me dragging my mouse over this, I can add support structures anywhere on the model, but for the most part, auto supports should be just fine, and you can modify some of the settings. The difference between material extrusion supports and those with resin is that these supports get embedded into the part. When we are building and curing, the support structure and the model are coming off as one piece or one whole print. So when you design your supports and remove them in resin, sometimes they result in little dimples or divots in the surface of your model. Unlike material extrusion where the part just gets printed on top of the supports and there's a very small gap between, there's no gap between supports and model in resin. So there's some settings we can play around with and there's great documentation with pictures as well that show you what each setting does. But for the most part, I'm going to change my raft shape to skate because this makes it a lot easier for me to remove after I'm done printing and I'll keep my support settings defaulted as they show right here. Then I'm going to hit auto support and as we can see here the slicer has auto generated my support structures for areas that need the most support while printing. After I'm done with support generation I can go back to the main area and this will allow me to hit the slice button. After slicing I can modify my exposure time, my lift distance, my bottom exposure and things like this. As you can see, layer height, I can't change. This depends on your printer, but things like exposure time and lift distance and speed is something you'd probably vary when you print different materials, different resins, usually documented in the material data sheet of the resin you're using. So on this left side, we see our part sliced and ready for resin printing. And then here we can view every single layer. So it does look vastly different compared to FDM in the sense that now we don't have a toolpath. We are curing each whole layer at the same time. So what we see here on the right is basically what gets flashed on the screen or the projector of the printer and the white areas indicate what material will get cured for each layer. So in total we have about 941 layers, 941. One thing to also note, of course, are the surfaces that I place my supports on. By orienting my part in this direction and having the supports on the outside, I will have a rougher dimpled surface from the support structures on the outside of my part because that's where they're contacting. But if I'd like a smoother outer part and I don't care too much about the inside, what I can do is remove my support generation 
go back to the main slicing area and rotate my part like this so that when I go back into my support generation, my location of supports will now be towards the inside of the part. We'll hit auto support. As we can see, now we have a new set of supports generated. If anything, this orientation produced more supports. And now if we go back to the main page, we can hit slice. And using this orientation, we will be guaranteed a smoother exterior surface and potentially a rougher interior surface because of the contact of the supports as mentioned before. And then we can save and offload this file to our system. Every system has its own specific export file type. So in this case, the Halo Maj uses a CXDLPV4 file type. When we hit save, it will save into our files and then we can send this file to our printer and get ready for printing. So this was a brief summary of Shitubox and how to get started with orienting your part and generating supports for resin printing. Feel free to play around with all the different features in the software to get more accompanied with what it can do.